everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Pathfinder Wrath of Righteous Let's Play Shadowheart Edition. In our last episode, we had the most infuriating boss fight ever, followed by uh, picking up Ninio, because she is best mage. And in this episode, we're going to start going over to the Blackwing Library, and then eventually after that, to the... Um... Well, I don't know. I might either go to Gorham's Mansion or the Aaron Day Party. I forgot where that was. Um, the big thing is, though, we're, I mean, we're not, you know, everybody's not fully rested by now, and I, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally, you know, trigger the <laughs> uh, Defender's Heart quest too soon, so we'll just have to... Also, what do I have to do here? Days of Strife. Um, what is that? I don't freaking know. Let's see here. Oh, here it is. Oh, that's right. The the thing. Yeah, whatever it is. Whatever. We'll go to the Blackwing Library first. We, actually, no, I, I lied. We'll go to the Hang Course first, because we need to... We need to pick up some tasty things. Uh, how's my... 414.8 out of 442. Oh. Nenio is not... Oh, hello. A lost bag. <laughs> hello? Anyone lose a bag? Oh, well, I guess it's mine. Yay. More things. Okay, I'll go ahead and save the game. Because I think you might have to do a little bit of combat in the Blackwing Library if you're not lucky. Um, Just so you guys know, since, you know, Shahar is a lawful character, she will not be trying to unlock the Trickster Path, of course, which kind of sucks, but I'm not worried about that right now. Okay, so, uh, let's see here. I just love how uh, she's able to ride a horse indoors. It's like, man... It's like fire emblem all over again. Nino has a cantrip ray of frost, which reminds me. What's a cantrip? Um. Oh. I mean, I might give her a crossbow if she, crossbow in terms of. Oh, she has a life. It's not masterwork, which means it stinks. But I'm sorry. Um. But yeah, I'd really prefer that she have a yeah. Okay, let's see. Actually, hang on. Five pounds of gear. Oh. <laughs> Alright, well, that's not too bad. And, um, also, before I go on, uh, too quickly, I did make a few changes to our dear little Nenio. She's still a Squirrel Savant, because those classes are cool. Um, I kind of tossed her stats around a little bit, and in doing so, completely realized that I did not... <laughs> I didn't give her an odd-numbered stat before level 4, so her intelligence is going to be a little messed up. But it's alright, not a big deal. The only other change I made... And this was just a personal thing for me. Um, I made it so that her opposition school is divination instead of uh, abjuration. I mean, it's not a huge deal. I can always make a dedicated dispeller to someone else, but it's just, it really kind of sucks that you know, she wouldn't be able to learn uh, dispel spells easy. And I thought, no, 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 no. We, we gotta, we gotta pick that out. And then. In terms of her actual spells, there was a, uh, let's see, it's not, it's not memorized right now, but there was a cool modified spell that I saw that I thought I've really got to try. It's called, uh, where is it? It's Incendiary Runes, and it's Abstraction, which is kind of weird. I mean, I get the protective nature of it, but it's designed to set people on fire. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, whatever. You know, I think I'll slap it down. Why not? Um, and then let's see. Let's just go ahead and uh, and this is another one that uh was modded in. This is really cool. Mortal Terror. Oh, oh. Uh, let's see. Your image blur and get my pattern. Nothing wrong with having two of those in the game. And I also accidentally learned a few higher level spells, <laughs> but that's not a big deal. Okay, so with that in mind, I will save once more because I've made changes and all that. And I also gave her a point blank shot. And I gave her a modded feat called, um, yeah, what was it called? Oh, here. Um, Cantrip Expert Intelligence. I highly recommend the uh, scaling cantrip feat myself. Because that lets you pop your um, intelligence, uh, or your spell, whatever spellcasting modifier of your choice. There's three variants there's charisma, there's wisdom, and intelligence. Um,. I don't give a crap if you think it wrecks the balance of the game. If this game is as hard as I've heard it is, then I will more than happily welcome it. So, let's go on in and see what's going on here. Stop! No, let's let's go over here. Check out this loot. 
It's way more important than what looks like a potential prisoner situation. Oh, <gasps> what? Are you shitting me? Oh my god! We got full. Wow! All right. And I'm now I'm encumbered. <laughs> Well, I don't give a crap what anybody says. I am not giving up that full burning, so... Uh... Uh, 4.30. How <laughs> much better, but I'll take it. Um, and I also got this cool Grace of Peace, which I think I already showed you guys. Uh, and then, of course, yeah. Anyway, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna save just in case. I don't want to lose that full burning. Anyway, let's go over here. Hello! Caleb. I, I don't... Is that Caleb or Caleb? It doesn't matter. We'll just call him Caleb, because I never see an H in Caleb before. A stocking green knight with a head of messy hair and black hair stands before you. His armor is sp spattered with blood. He greets you with a deep, booming voice. Ha! Crusaders! Excellent! I am Captain Caleb Sazamal, and these are my men. I am about to burn these vile stabbers and heretics! The, uh, here, these pathetic imitators of the traitor, Arilu, who tricked their way into the ranks of the Crusaders. The knight nods at a heap of severely beaten people, and a strange elf whose appearance seems jarring for some unknown reason. Sazamal bellows threats at his prisoners, who seem to be in a state of deep shock and utter terror. A strange feeling rises up within you. It's pure instincts. You don't know what you're about to do, but you are certain that it is right. What happened to the library? Demon showed up and carried everything off. I wasn't there to see it myself. I was fighting in the square. But these filthy traitors told me everything. My fists made them quite chatty. So, what? You tortured them? You think those methods are worthy of a crusader? Under ordinary circumstances, no. But look around. The city is burning. Now is not the time for squeamishness. Or trial by jury, apparently. Why do you want to burn them? Do, 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 do. The warrior howls like a wild animal. Look around you! The city is burning ruins. So many innocent lives lost. And all because of abominations like these here. Cultists, heretics, and spies. Slipping into our ranks. Carrying out the orders of their brutal masters. And preparing a heinous death for us all. They want to get us over to the demons, just like a Relu did with our chorus. They deserve to feel the flames licking at their legs. Do, 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 do. Let's take a closer look at these people. Which one is higher? Oh, man, man, I, I gotta train that. Here, we'll do this. Yeah. Subsidia has perception. Caleb is talking too loudly, all while casting sidelong looks at you. You have seen similar behavior little quirks before. In liars. Let's see, oh wow, that's... <laughs> Smile politely and nod, but then suddenly punch near soldier. Uh, I'm totally gonna miss already. Uh, let's see if we can get a little bit more experience. Yeah, alright! You notice the emblems on the armor of the two silent crusaders belonging to the Order of the Flaming Lance, but Caleb's armor bears the sigil of the Order of Sunrise Sword. Strange, then, that he introduced himself as our captain. Something's not right here. Uh. Oh, man. God damn it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, need, I need to roll at least a 13 to win this one. And it wouldn't even be that bad, but it's just like... If I fail this, I'm going to be at a bit of a disadvantage in the fight. Uh... <laughs> Ah, oh, fuck it, YOLO. Smile politely and nod, but then suddenly punch the nearest soldier. That's right! Death to traitors! BAM! And I missed. God damn it. He's like, what are you doing, you weirdo? Yeah. Uh, no! What? No! They're on fire! Oh, shit! <laughs> No, 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 we're redoing that. We're redoing that. Uh that's not okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't be so quick to, you know. But here's the thing. So if you do rescue all those soldiers, and I don't know if attacking them will make any difference. But if you um save all those soldiers, I believe you'll be able to get a really, really, really cool reward. And of course I'll be able to help you in the uh so I think for gameplay reasons I wanna I wanna give that a try. 
Because I forgot how bad that was. God dang it. Okay. Uh. Okay. Uh. Why not? Let's just. Okay. Um. Lawful attack. I don't believe you. You are the traitor. Caleb tightens his grip on his weapon and yells to his hacky. Burn them! He watches solemnly as a flash of alchemist fire lands on the amount of books, which immediately ignites. Oh, for crying out loud. Are you serious? <sighs> God damn it. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. The roaring flame scream knows burning alive here, desperate cry. They lied to you! They are the traitors! The true crusaders are burning! Yeah, I know, dude. Caleb looks at you in grim annoyance and spits on the floor. I thought I'd pull one over on you there. Too bad it didn't work out. For you. You'll meet your death in the flames with the rest of the scum. My new masters, the demons, will be pleased that I wiped out another couple of crusaders. Get another obstacle. Yeah, there's like, yeah, good luck. Um, oh shit. I'm tempted to try again anyway. Um. Fuck. <laughs> Who? Does Zane really have the highest, um... I thought my horsey did. Yeah, my horsey has way higher athletics. Oh, oh let me guess. It's... You can't punch people. No, of course a horse can't punch people. It can only, you know, run over and trample them. Fucking bullshit. <sighs> okay, I tell you what. It's a bit of a... Well... Okay, I tell you what, I'm gonna try it one more time. I'm gonna try this one more time, and that's it. Because I don't want to wind up failing those uh, religion and knowledge checks and all that stuff before him, so. Oh, man. There's only other ways to do it, like, you know. <laughs> Alright. I'll see you when I'm there again. Alright. Alright, uh, and like I said, this is, this is gonna be the last time. And you know what? If they die, it's not a big deal. I already have another haste potion I still have to use for some reason, so. Alright, we'll try again. God fucking damn it. You know, I swear to god, this game has a system where if you make a roll, regardless of whether it succeeds or fails, the game just remembers it, and even if you quick load. It just keeps the old roll, and it's just like, god fucking damn it. Let's see, at the last second, the traitor ducks and dodges your strike. He brings his arm back sharply, then turns on his heel and fires something onto the pirate books. The flask of alchemist fire flies from his hand like a catapult, and the book ignites, book ignites on impact. Yeah, 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 I know. Blah, 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 blah. Also, I somehow got shoved back here so quick, okay. Huh? Alright, time to fight then. Woohoo! Um. There's a whole bunch of them over there, so we might as well just throw down an insane. Please don't walk into them. Ow. Really? A reflex saves? God damn it. Okay. Uh, Divine Divinity. I mean, Zap. Okay, just as long as I don't accidentally move too closer, okay? Uh. I'm Shaleb. Piece of shit. Okay. We'll hit the weaker ones. Boink. Everybody has such good fortitude saves in this game. I hate it. <laughs> okay. Alright. And then they move nice and slow. Alright. The good thing is they're just regular people, so... It's not like they have any crazy resistances or anything. Uh, I just have to go a little bit. You've crossed the wrong mob. Wait, what? Is, what do you have? Are you serious? Oh, your teeth links. God damn it. <laughs> They're just regular people. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Coal function. Okay, well, well, we'll go with acid then. Throw a vat of acid in your face. You. Holy shit! That was awesome. Good job. Okay. And don't go freaking out like, ah, it's too powerful. Trust me, Sila in one full attack can do so much more damage. I mean, hell. That 13 damage I got from mods was still nowhere near her typical, like, 20-something damage from that March of Terror. So, yeah. I won't get all freaked out. Trust me. The game is 
No, it's more fun this one. Oh, you bubbled, goddammit. <laughs> I love it because we get free turns. Alright, uh, let's see here. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. So Caleb is still a little bit close. Or still a little bit. See, I know uh, Celo won't be affected, I think, but her horse might still, you know, catch some of that. So we'll challenge you. And then. Well, actually, I think it'll be safe. I think. Uh, see, the problem is, okay, so it's a, it's a, yeah, it'll affect me if the circle turns red. So, okay, I'll just, I'll just, probably doesn't, it's probably not, not going to be that much of a big deal, but, um, you know. Hmm, what should I do now? Uh, I don't know. Um. Oh, actually, no, it turns right here, regardless. Maybe it's just where my cursor's at. Huh. It doesn't matter. Uh. Yeah, let's let's do sneak attacks. Or, no, actually, no, not you. You're already dead, so. Well, no, no, yeah, let's do Taylor. He's, yeah, there we go, he's fine. And I critted. Okay. Uh, I'm out of, yeah, I'm out of those, so I'll just use Divine Favor instead. Also, I can't attack now because I'm dumb. I'm not really worried, I wasn't really worried about buffing for this fight. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and take down the weaker ones. Oh my god! Stop fumbling! Oh, son of a junk! Okay. Gee, me freaking Christmas, guys. What the hell is your deal? You're irrelevant. I just said to quit fumbling. I love it when people don't listen. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go up a little closer, and we're gonna play the game of Risk. Uh, Putting hands. Boom! Wow, that was bad. Oh my god. <laughs> oh shit! That's about barely does any damage! Okay. Alright. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and whack this guy then. The Inheritor! Bam! Uh, we'll see. I wish it'd be a little bit more clear on whether they saved their. Uh, okay, challenge. Entangled, frightened. Okay, good. Yeah, and it'd be nice if they had more clear-cut symbols over their heads, too. It's like, I cannot for the life of me tell if, you know... The spirits demand your blood. Yeah, of course. Alright. Give him a whack. Oh, son of a junk! Alright. <laughs> yes, go towards the fire. <laughs> Thank you! Oh, right, I forgot to turn that off. Okay. Uh... Oh my god, come on! Ah, oh, stupid misses, I swear to god, this is... I don't like when I'm playing the highest difficulty level. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. Uh, let's see, you're in, uh... Okay, I don't think there's... Mm. Oh, sure, why not? Let's do it. Hit your allies now. Nice! Ha 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 ha! Nice. Okay. Okay. Uh, nice. And they can't act. They can't act this turn. <laughs> Losers. All right, get him. Bam! Get out, bitch! All right. You are today's sacrifice. See, that's why people love Greece. It's it is it is the best crowd control spell for level one. There's just there's, it, it, I mean you literally cannot compete with that. It's kind of depressing. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, let's see, 42. Actually, he has a lot of reflex save, doesn't he? Screw it. We'll just eat this. Ah, nice. All right. Okay. Uh, back to regular. Need a land. I don't. What the hell? I don't want you to walk towards him. I want you to shoot him. Seriously? Yeah, it, it gets a little finicky when a, a character falls on the ground. I think they actually gain up. Bonus armor class against range attacks. Why that is? I, I don't like it. Um. Okay, fine. Skip your, skip your damn turn. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um. Uh, okay. Dude, what the fuck? Really? Oh shit! That was wrong. Oh my god! I'm so dumb. Fuck. Here, finish him. Diggity damn! Wow, one hit point. Oh crap! There we go. Good job. And don't worry, the storyteller is like immune to everything. Literally. A blind elf stands before you. He looks extremely strange. His face wears its hair years heavy, heavily, which is unusual for members of a trace. Thinning gray hair, a ragged beard, sightless milky eyes, pale papery skin, covered in age spots, a spine curved by the passage of time. This is not how elves typically age. The youth that graces the faces of elves, even on their deathbed, has totally abandoned this decrepit specimen. That is an elf with a beard. I guess the worst can't be found even amongst the best. Wow, you're a bitch. A bearded elf! How very intriguing! If you please, I would like to pluck out a hair of that phenomenon manifesting on your chin. In the interest of science, of course. My god. <laughs> and use the best. The old elf holds out his hand in your direction, in a perennial gesture of the blind, greeting you with an unexpectedly strong and calm voice. Hello, I am Storyteller, and I wish to thank my rescuers. And it's you, if I am not mistaken. Storyteller? <laughs> That's the first I've ever heard of a venerable old-timer like that having a street name. <laughs> well, Tiff, I don't think you know how street names work. Who are you? The old old phones. I prefer people to call me Storyteller, It very accurately describes the sphere of my occupations and interests. Most of the places I have been, I am known by that name. How come you didn't burn in the fire? To tell the truth, I myself do not know. Plot <laughs> armor! Excuse me. I felt the heat. It was so strong. I waited for the pain of burning, but I was unscathed. But the smoke nearly did finish me off. It may be some form of magical protection against fire, but I don't know by what means I may have acquired it. Just another oddity from my collection of the inexplicable. Gloom steals across the storyteller's pensive face. I want to talk to you about something. The old elf responds with dignity and courtesy, but firmly. And thanks for my rescue. I, of course, will render you a servant in turn, whatever it may be. However, at this moment, I wish to be somewhere safer than the present surroundings. My recent adventures have fatigued me greatly. I would be grateful if you could help me to a safe shelter of some kind. The stubborn uh, set of the elves mouth tells you that he won't change his mind. Typical. You do someone a good turn, and instead of saying thank you, they just ask for more help. Go easy on the old elf. He's had a rough go of it. Yeah, because we've had it so easy. <laughs> Finny and the talking weapon. We can't not help him. If it was up to my me, Grandfather Elf, I'd throw you over my shoulder and carry you out of here. This is no place for old folks. You know, on that note, I kind of wish we could turn Finian into a ballista. <laughs> I'm taking you to the defenders. Uh... Mm, I don't want to go. I have other things to do. I'll help you later. In that case, I will remain here for now. Wandering the city wall is under attack by demons would be inadvisable for a blind person. Don't forget to take me with you when you're going to a safe place. I will definitely do that. Uh, okay, first off. Ask nicely. Turn off your spell. Please! Well. Turn off your spell, please. Thank you. Now we're gonna loot. Yeah. Fucking hell. Ooh, give him out of one. Yeah, I'll take that. We need some better potions anyway. And as usual, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm totally gonna have to throw stuff away, I'm sure. Also, these guys had some pretty These guys had some pretty bangin' spot. <gasps> what? Masterwork heavy Oh my god, we need to okay, we're get, we're getting new range weapons. We're getting new range weapons. I don't care how many things I have to get rid of from my 
That's working. Crossbow. Both of our ways are heaviest armor. I don't. I don't freaking care. Even half weight isn't as. Okay. Now we have a new warhammer, which is the collapse. Thank you, Nenio. Okay. Let's see how many things we. Oh. Wow. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do, I do not know how to sit. Actually, wait, this, that's funny. This this breastplate has a different looking pattern to it. That's kind of cool. Excuse me. Uh, what? I, 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 I need it. Okay. I tell, tell you what, I'm going to take care of this real quick, and then I will be right back. Okay, so I got rid of some of the useless crap that I didn't need after all, and, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you guys about a few, uh, other weapons I got, a couple. Uh, this virtual star knife that I had that didn't get identified is now identified, and it's interesting that some of these, uh, I swear this was an exotic weapon at one point, I thought it was, but anyway. It's cold iron, enhanced plus one finesse wielding, and it does an additional 43 damage to evil creatures, so that's definitely something I should probably get this guy going on, hopefully. And then, the Collapse, the Warhammer, is just one-handed weapon. Uh, whenever it is plus one cold iron Warhammer confirms a critical hit, all enemies in a 15-foot area must pass a fortitude saving throw, DC 16, or become prone. Now that is awesome. Uh, doesn't do quite as much, uh, let's see. A little bit of comparison, please. Yeah, it doesn't. Quite as much damage as a heavy piece of fire, but I could still see myself possibly using this. We'll see. In the meantime, we'll stick with uh, this for now. Okay. Also, you need new uh, here. We're gonna get you both of these because you have way too many hit points. Okay. Now, I will help the storyteller out, and it, it might shunt me back over to the uh, defender's heart. And if it does, well, that's we'll get this uh, turned to the guardian times. Blah blah blah. blah. Okay. And then I'll keep looking around this library. What's it say? That great library of Canavers has been ravaged and wrecked by the most barbaric way. It seems that someone took perverse pleasure in smashing lamps and furnitures and tearing pages out of books. Huh. Man, those demons sure do hate to read. The Verisian Horror? I'll take that. And it, oh, what's this? Padded armor? Rare? What is it called? It, it, ah! Okay. <laughs> I'll deal with it. Slimy skin, or... Uh, oh. I thought it was... Okay, never mind. Um... <laughs> it actually has a plus two... Okay. This padded armor grants but wear a plus two bonus on concentration checks. Yeah, I know. I'll take it. Here, I'll drop this. <laughs> okay. And then, for this loot, we will have... Guino Pollen. Notes from my travels in northern Avistan. Cool. Okay, now... One more thing we need to do. This fancy little griffin statue has caught my eye for some reason. Win Wings of Stone, you found the griffin statue. Ooh. Wait, what? Oh, oh, oh no! What's it doing? We woke it up! Run! Oh, it's flying away. Hmm, I wonder if it will see, we'll see it later. I don't know! Was that a griffin? I thought they were long extinct in these parts. A fascinating phenomenon. It's a pity that a specimen flew away before I could take any measurements. <laughs> God damn it, Nenio. Shut up. <laughs> You're so awesome. Okay, alright. Let's, let's find a storyteller. Uh, oh, wait. Before we go, one more book. Temple of Ayamade, Father Lorian's Guide for Neophytes. Cute. Okay. Uh, oh, here. Uh, Shadow Hearts, is it not? I recognize you from the sound of your footsteps. You are scary, dude. There was a, there was a griffin statue here. It suddenly came to life and flew away. Do you know anything about it? The griffin stood in this library for decades, but only today did he take flight. Why? I do not know, but I am glad his ancient slumber came to an end. The elf smiles at his thoughts. He has a long story behind him, and yet uh, the real tale is only just beginning today. No, I will not reveal his secrets. I think your paths will cross again, so you can ask him yourself. Fine. I'm taking you to Defender's Heart. Please accept my sincere thanks once more, and if I may, please don't rush. I will struggle to keep up with your long leg, your young legs. I. Fuck. You know what? Yeah, I probably should. 
I need to offload some crap that I don't need. And... I mean, I could try and see if I could get some rest before the Defender's Heart comes under attack. I'm not sure. But I really, really want to make sure I can get that, uh... That money before I... Okay. Alright. Now all my uh, spells have been selected. Before we go too far, though, I will go ahead and find Shtor each other here, because it's time we've had a talk! I'm not... Oh, what's this? Blind Elf looks better than he did in your last encounter. His clothes are clean, and his pale face has some color. The Elf turns to you and listens closely. Is that you, my savior? I recognize your footsteps. Determined footsteps befitting a determined person. Allow me to thank you again for saving me. Please accept this helmable gift as a token of my appreciation. This Elf hands you a small black ring with two scarlet runes on it. Okay, Scarlet Storyteller Tree. Arabeth has explained why you were looking for me. I warned the authorities of Canabras that the local wardstone had been desecrated. They waved off my warning and paid for their inactions. I have examined many wardstones, but only in the one guarding Canabras did I sense a flaw, a spot of corruption inside, a vulnerability that demons will surely use. They are able to spread the blight inside the wardstone, corrupt it, and make it their weapon. It frightened me to think what will be capable of the wards. People of the wardstone must be destroyed. Who are you, and why did they let you examine a wardstone? The elf smiles faintly. I am a storyteller, just an old elf. And a bit more, I am old even for you know. I've seen many things, and have been to many places. Not so long ago, I witnessed the making of a young kingdom in a stolen land, led by a remarkable and promising individual. My advice on the complicated matter of conquering those lands proved useful to that leader. Hmm... That sounds like a game that was released a few years ago. This is not uncommon for me. Some seek my advice or my services, and I don't refuse. This is how I acquired my reputation as an old vagrant who's never hurt anyone, stayed out of other squabbles, but sometimes gave good advice. I had a few friends in Erosian who vouched for my integrity. That is why my humble request to be, to be allowed to see the Wardstones was granted. I visited all of them, but only found cause for alarm in Canabras. Do you wield some special pow magic power? Some, some instinct? The storyteller chuckles. Yes, to a certain extent, but it is more of a gift. I can see the past, stories that have happened. I touch an object and shreds of its owner's memories are revealed to my mind. Their emotions, passions, and tragedies, I see visions like I am them, and their stories happen to me. This is my power. I have been roaming the world gathering such stories for many thousands of years. One day I will gather them all. <laughs> Gotta gather them all. What blight is concealed in Wardstone? I'm afraid I don't have the answer to your question. To understand the nature of this blight, we need to understand how the Wardstone was created. And it is hidden from me. I can only guess. Have you heard of the Red Morning Massacre? A dreadful morning remembered with fear even by those not yet born at the time. A demon as called Monaco invaded the city with a crowd of her followers and started to do what demons do best, kill and desecrate. They say they covered the wardstone with pieces of dead bodies, splashed it with blood from top to bottom. Could such an abomination darken the radiance of the gift of Iomade herself? The locals think that is impossible, but who knows? It was not until it was not the last attack. Many leaders brought their unholy forces here, even the terrifying Baylor Karamzada. Their attacks were rebuffed, but they still reached their target. I think this is when the seed of corruption was planted in the stone. It wouldn't have grown on its own, but Discari himself has now come to take advantage of this weakness to open the abscess that has been festering for years, unnoticed by the people of Canopers. And when the Demon Lord struck the blow, the weakened stone gave in. Now it's in demon hands, and nothing is stopping them from spreading the blight throughout the entire stone, and from it to the other stones along the whole perimeter of the world wound. Why did you travel? Why did you travel to the ward stones? I tried to see their stories. The visions I had when I touched the ward stones were unclear. I saw hundreds, maybe thousands, of different stories at the same time. 
They followed each other like flashes of lightning. It was impossible to separate them. I couldn't understand where one of them ended and the next began. I have heard you, Storyteller. In that case, you must make every possible effort to destroy the corruption. Unfortunately, I don't know where to get an instrument powerful enough to banish it from the Wardstone. As far as I know, there is nothing like it in Canabras. But the demons might have something. I heard the dying roar of Terindola, the Silver Dragon, protector of the city. At the same time, I felt a wave of unfamiliar power sweep over me from head to toe. I would advise you to go toward Terindola Parish and search there for... something. I'm sorry I can't be more specific. But the intuition and a strange sense of brightness tell me to point you there. Why is it so important again? I have examined many ward stones, but only in the one guarding Canabra, so did I sense a flaw. A spot of... Oh, okay, we've heard this one. Uh, can I help you? The storyteller nods gratefully. I appreciate your offer. I have reason to believe that somewhere in Canabras, there is a manuscript authored by an elf from Kunin who witnessed Earthfall. The storyteller's voice suddenly breaks, and he stops for a moment. For personal reasons, I would like to examine it. But no matter how hard I try, I have failed to find it. Even in the Blackwing Library, I only found a mention that the manuscript exists and is held somewhere in the city. I assume it's stored at the Great Garrison. They wouldn't let me into the archive when I visited. All those crusaders were nervous about the strange blind elf interested in their secrets. It's understandable. The crusade naturally made them a little paranoid. But now the Great Garrison has fallen into the enemy's hands. I would be grateful if I could see the manuscript. You're telling me they wouldn't let you look at a book in the Great Garrison, but you got to see the Wardstone all you wanted? Okay, whatever. I don't know more about you. Yoda permits himself a faint smile. I am not surprised. A strange, peculiar-looking elf with unusual powers who comes from afar and calls himself a collector of stories. Such things usually spark some interest. I'll answer your questions. Who are you and where are you from? Before, I would have said I was a blacksmith from Kilnan who lost his sight and then found his true calling in a new craft, that of a story collector. But I have lately begun to suspect that those words are no more, no more than a lie. The old elf chuckles sadly. It's quite the irony. I never thought I'd have cause to complain about my memory. It holds the stories of the entire world, but I notice more and more alarming signs recently. I encounter ancient stories and see myself in them. I don't remember those events, but stories cannot lie. So it means that my memory is lying? And I intend to get to the bottom of it. I'm looking for proof that my visions are true, and for the reason why my past has been hidden from me. You look ancient. That elves didn't get old. The blind man straightens his bony back with dignity. As you can see, we do if we manage to live for many thousands of years. There may not be a single mortal in this world older than me. The storyteller sighs and continues with a sad smile. Anyway, it's not about time. It's not about time. It's about the stories I keep inside. There is so much suffering and sadness in this world. And in my stories, too. I've lived every one of them. I've drunk this bitter experience and accepted it in my heart. It's hard. The weight of all this suffering on my shoulders. But I wouldn't trade my burden for any other. Where'd you get your strange powers? The storyteller shrugs. I've always gone along well with things. I used to be a blacksmith, that I know for sure. I've always felt the essence of things. The spirit. For as long as I can remember, I have always been able to feel the traces of memories and feelings left on things by their former owners. You don't know where this gift comes from. Maybe, having taken my sight, the gods granted me another sense. Why did you come to the world, or world wound? Searching for the truth about my real past has brought me here. I saw myself in other stories. In them, I was called the Elf in the Tower. Now I'm looking for this tower. My tower. Everywhere. I've been to many places. I've visited islands and deserts. But I haven't found it. There are very few uncharted territories on my map. The World Wound is one of them. <laughs> How do you collect stories? The same way a court philanderer collects his conquests. The way a healer has a personal cemetery of patients he fails to save. The way every person, including you, has a box of secret, most precious experiences deep down in their soul that no one is allowed to touch. The world is not made of things, or matter even. It's made of stories. They move from the past to the future, piercing our world at the point of here and now. 
They give meaning to everything. They are the, they are the meaning, and everything else is the only setting required for stories to exist. There is nothing more real and alive than a story, and anything real and alive can die of being stories. Distorted. Forgotten. But as long as I carry these stories within me, they will not be lost. <laughs> this is why I don't often share my stories. By sharing one with you, I give you the right to tell it to others, to distort and embellish it advertently or inadvertently. How can I be sure you will keep it to original purity? Stories travel from one person to another. They change, become distorted, turn into tall tales. This is why I keep my stories to myself. Oh, my God. Nowadays, I wish more and more people in the real world kept stories to themselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have no more questions. That's what you think. In fact, the world is full of amazing things, and you still have a lot of questions. They just haven't bubbled up to the surface of your consciousness yet. I have a few questions about our encounter in the Blackwing Library. Of course. I made no secret of why I came to the library. I was looking for something. What are you doing there? I was looking for a very old thing. Rumor has it some ancient scroll or a book or page about the times of Earthfall is held in Canabras. According to the legend, it describes the last days of the proud kingdom of Kionin, later abandoned by the elves fleeing Galarian. I have a vague hope that the events described in it will shed some light on my past. Do you mind what you're looking for? The storyteller shakes his head gloomily. Alas, no. But I found proof that the book I'm looking for is in Canabras. Or at least a part of it is. I see. Thank you again for your help. I have to go. I wish you interesting adventures. I wish you interesting adventures. I like that quote. That's good. Okay, so with all that taken care of... I'd still like to go to the, uh... uh the house that, uh... Harder squirm bills, but we'll see what happens here. You blame your troubles on everybody else, but you always claim the credit for anything that goes right. Is that really any way to live? See, the human side of your mouth is flapping, but all I hear is a lizardy hiss. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. I like that. Okay, let's see here. Mm, uh oh. It looks like I can still go! Cool! Awesome! Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> okay. Alright, so... Oh, man. That took a toll on my voice. And before you ask, no, I was not actually trying to impersonate Michael Gao or Dickard King. It's just the voice that just kind of came to mind. I'm sure there's a much better uh, old elf voice. I mean, hell... I'll bet anything Hugo Weaving could pull play that part way better than me. <laughs> Alright, okay, so let's go ahead and... But <laughs> damn it, okay. I'll tell you what, I'll meet you guys there. In the meantime, I'm gonna get a drink. Well... What an entrance! Oh my god, I forgot how cool this moment is. What in the name of the Green Mother's going on in this crazy town? <laughs> yes, this is Olberg, the DLC character that everybody knows. So, I was on my way out when I completely forgot I have stuff to sell, and I have a cleric to talk to for uh, errand. <clears throat> and while well, now that I'm here, he's here too, so why the hell not? Uh, the ceiling gives way with a thundering crash, and Gr Griffin lands on the floor of the tavern. In a flash, the creature transforms. A huge red-bearded man now stands before you. Folding his arms, he casts a proprietary eye over the tavern. And he already asked a question. Who's in charge here? You there, in the armor. Or is it you, tavern keeper? Or maybe it's you, old-timer. Oh, you, I remember. You are in that ravaged fortress with all the books. You can explain all this to me. Yes, I can explain all this to you because you just looked at me. Well? Let's try it. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, all right. First things first. If by some chance you don't already know, they call me Ulbrich. Ulbrich Olesk. Chief of the Olesk clan. The one that gave Barzog's orcs a drubbing. I've never heard of them either. 
damned. Just an illusion or something? One minute I'm laying myself down for a nap in a glade one summer's day, and the next I'm waking up among ruins and flames and monsters running riot. And no one knows me. But you see, my name's famous across our chorus. Where in the blazes am I? What's going on here? Succeeded in Oz Rorschach. You have heard songs that tell the glorious victory of an alliance of Sarkorian tribes over an orcish horde led by a chief called Barzog. But that was a long time ago, centuries in the past, before the demonic invasion. Is it possible that this man does not know that Sarkorus has fallen? <laughs> you, uh, couldn't come through the door? The door would have been smarter, right enough. I was asleep too long, that must be it. My head's all muddled. I remember I was flying over the city looking for something, and when I found it, I just... just drove straight for it. Roads and roofs be damned. But what was I looking for? Drinks? Warriors? No, oh, that's not it. Or maybe you. Was I looking for you? You saw me in the library. When? <clears throat> now, let me think. Strange. The memory's in there, but it's all broken up in little pieces. So... I opened my eyes, I saw books and stones around me, and, and you were there. Then I was flying over the city, I, I had wings, and then I was in this here tavern, and, and then I saw you again. In the library there was a stone statue of a griffin. It came to life suddenly and flew off. Was that you? A statue, you say? Strange, I don't remember being turned to stone. But if it looked like a griffin, then it must have been me. Take a gander at this. Don't worry, I won't scratch you. I'm no werewolf, I'm, I'm a shifter. My powers were granted to me by the sacred griffin Ervar, who protects our clan. I doubt you've got any other griffins flying about this city, Bjorn. You're saying you fell asleep in our chorus and woke up here? That's what I'm saying to you. I was plucked like a fish from a pond and... Hurried off to God's nowhere. All right, that's enough questions from you. Now answer some of mine. Where am I, and what's going on here? The city is called Canabras. I don't know how long you were asleep, but Sarkoris hasn't existed for a hundred years. <laughs> oh, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> oh, you got me there. You're telling me I fell asleep for a hundred years. Sarkoris was swallowed by demons, and Canabras, that little fishing village, is now a fortress city. <laughs> oh, go on, pull the other one. Fine. If you don't want to tell me what's going on, don't. We're in a tavern, not in the middle of nowhere. There's plenty of folks around. I'm sure one of these people will tell me what's happening here. There's one thing I do know without asking. You've got a tough fight on your hands. I'm not one to wait on an invitation to a brawl, so if you're making ready to break some demon horns, I'm going with you. But in the meantime, I'm gonna have a taste of whatever ale they brew here. You go right on ahead, dude. All right, so, yeah, I forgot about him. <laughs> okay, so before I get too far, I believe, Jernog, is it Jernog the one I talked to? Uh, no, it is not. So I think then, it's not for an for autumn haze. Might be Vesely? Oh yeah, here we go. Whenever I sleep outside the walls of the Defender's Heart, I'm plagued by terrible dreams. Can you help me? The priest studies your face carefully. You look tired, but otherwise entirely healthy. If we were anywhere else, I would simply tell you to get some rest, but we are on the border of the world wound, and I'm all too aware, aware of what's happening to you. As you know, the wound is a rift between Galarian and the Abyss, and all the evil creature evil that feeds the Abyss does the opposite in our world. Feeds on Galarian. So it is that we, even when we cannot see demons near us, our ultimate foe, the Abyss, is always surrounding us. Many soldiers fighting in a world wound experience similar things. They suffer terrible nightmares, get no peace, and sometimes even lose their minds. But we are trying to help you with this affliction. By the will of Abadar, I have consecrated an altar here. The gods, uh... Praise permeates the space around it, soothing one's soul and quieting thoughts during rest. So if you find your nerves are fraying, seek out a holy place like this. Approach it, and all the corruption will be cleansed from you. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, we get it. All right. If there ain't me. Let's see. Now, where is, um, there it is, Ulbrich. Well, now you know I gotta talk to this guy. <laughs> 
Oh, hey there. Just the last I wanted to talk to. To your health, by the way. Ulbrick sips from his beer mug. I asked around this here city and about the whole hubbub. Who you lot are fighting and why? And the more I hear, the less I understand. So you weren't lying about Canabras and the demons invading. Everyone from the tavern keeper to a knight is giving me the same hokum. They all say Sarkoris was burned to the ground by a bunch of Volgans a hundred years ago. And Canabras, this godforsaken village the size of a pig's snout, was turned into this massive fortress to defend against them. Which means I must have slept for a hundred years and didn't notice a thing. So what am I to make of this? Am I the bombing one or is it everyone else? Or maybe we've all been bewitched by Fay and are living in the yarn that's spinning. Talk about a doozy. Ulbricht scratches his beard. I want to ask you something. Oh, that's right. I had a question of my own to ask you. Explain to me plain and simple. Back when we first met, what was that about? How did I end up in that fortress with all the books? Why did I wake up right when you came? This is horse feathers. The real horse feathers here is how many questions you're able to ask without pausing your breath or letting me get a word in edgeways. Yeah, I've asked them all. Just answer already. I'm all ears. <laughs> I Griffin statue has stood in this library for decades. Does this mean I was napping inside the statue? What woke me up was probably the grasshopper god smashing the city with his sight. I'm a heavy sleeper, but no one could slip through a whopper like that. No, it still doesn't make a lot of sense. What? Right, so, what was it you wanted to ask me about? Tell me about your homeland. I'll tell you this, Sarkoris isn't a country, Sarkoris is a whole world! Just imagine, a lake standing at the edge of snowy woods in the north, perch splashing in the southern and the east, furry bumblebees buzzing over the blooming hills of the south, and everywhere you look there are people, the likes of which you won't find anywhere in the world. They are the bravest in battle, and the fleetest in, fleetest in dance. Hundreds of tribes, each with its own legends, songs, heroes, gods, and spirits. Now you tell me, could a land like that really have perished because of a few grasshoppers? Or believe it, never. Alright, now it's your turn. Where do you hail from? Who's your tribe? So, basically as far as her backstory goes, when Shadowheart was um, discovered she had been kidnapped from her old family, and realized that they uh, they had long since died, and took revenge on those that she had once believed were family. She has since basically, you know, shut that part of her life out of her. So, as far as she's concerned, she has no tribe. <laughs> the fa the party members she travels with, of course, but she doesn't consider them family. I have no tribe. I'm on my own. Hmm. Well. I won't judge. I don't think I could live like that. Alone without a soul to call dear. How's that living? You're from the oldest clan, right? Tell me about it. Our clan is one of the oldest. Our history goes back to a time before us, our chorus was settled. When our ancestors lived in the mountains in the far north. Once their mountain home had become too small for them, they went down to the untrodden hills and forests of the south, drove out the monsters and the giants, and found us our chorus. Even back then, the Olesks were the first to every battle, and the first to build a settlement on their land. People wrote so many songs about our deeds that if I were to start singing them all to you now, we'd be stuck here for a good month. Who else is the Orcus invaders? Who seduced the Fae Queen and stole her tiara? Whose apples are the size of a hair, and whose sides are made from the apples can knock a bear out? That's right, it's Olesk. It's all us, the Olesks. Oh, damn. If giants lived there before your ancestors came, you really can't call those lands untrodden, can you? <laughs> oh, you're a laugh. You're saying giants are people? Have you seen one with your own eyes? They can't even speak our tongue. They just growl and fart. Damn it. <laughs> okay, I like Goldberg. <laughs> they may look like humans, but they're dumber than frogs. All they know is eating and fighting. They eat on human flesh. I'll have you know. So don't feel bad for those freaks. Our ancestors were right to cut them down. What was your role in your tribe? I was the chieftain, and not by right of blood like in some tribes. It takes more than being born in the right family to lead the old Esks. You have to earn that right from our divine patron, Erevar, the heavenly griffin, chose me. Orberg chuckle chuckles mirthlessly. Except, as you can see, I didn't do my clan much good. The chieftain's duty is to be with their people, in peace and in war, in life and in death. And what did I do? I banded them. There's no two ways about it. I missed everything. I slept through everything. Tell me about your patron, Griffin. 
Eva, the griffin whose beak has mocked the sun and whose talons have raked the moon. Ulbrich crosses his arms in a ritual tester. He is the ancient protector of our clan. From each generation, he chooses one who is worthy of wielding his power and leading his tribe. But ever since I woke up here, he hasn't spoken to me once. No prophetic dreams, no answers, no signs. His power is still with it. His power is still with me. So he must be alive. And why is he silent? He shakes his red mane helplessly. Thank you for your answers. I'm always up for a chat, especially while they're so beardly drunk. Uh, what else? Okay, I can't answer anything else. I have to go. Soft grass underfoot to you. Okay. Well. Sorry about that. I had to check something. Uh, okay. My goodness. I've actually gotten through a lot more than I thought in a pretty decent amount of time. So, I see what. We're going to go ahead and just go ahead and do the, uh, Horgus Worm House. And I will see you guys there. Hey, everybody. It's Mr. Han. How's it going? So, we're actually not going to go on to the Horgus Worm quest. Um, I originally recorded, uh, this episode, and it included the quest, but there was one battle at the mansion that got so horrendously long, and just wound up being more difficult than I thought it would, and I basically wound up cutting that episode off in the middle of the mansion, and for some reason, it just felt to me like that just, not only they made this episode longer than it needed to be, but the whole thing just felt really weird, kind of cutting off in the middle of a major quest. So I've decided I'm going to cut things off here, and for the next episode, we're going to combine the Horgus Worm Mansion with Dayrin's party. Uh, yeah. Sorry about shortening things up here. I just felt like that made more sense. Um, but yeah. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, may you have interesting adventures.